But let me bring you more news about Facebook because it's being criticised, the social network, again after live-streamed footage showed a father killing his 11-month-old daughter in Thailand. The horrific broadcast stayed online for 24 hours and was watched more than 100,000 times. It provides more ammunition for critics who claim the social media company is neglecting its responsibility to remove disturbing content as soon as possible. At the little girl's funeral yesterday, her mother was overcome by grief. I can only try to come to terms with it. At that time, I could only think that I want to take my life. After my daughter, I don't want to live. If I could, I would take her place. Facebook sent condolences to the family for the incident and said the content has now been removed. Hamy Nigam, the former chief security officer of MySpace, who now runs online safety consultancy SSP Blue, joins me now. Good morning. Good morning, Emma. The film stayed online for 24 hours. It's been viewed more than 100,000 times. How has that been allowed to happen by Facebook? Well, I, I, mean, I think what we're seeing is a fundamental flaw in the approach that Facebook has what traditionally taken, which is relying on users to flag content. In the real world, in the physical world, when, it, when a typical citizen sees a tra- almost tragic incident about to take place, such as this man on the top of a roof, they will do something immediately. They will call the police. They will try to help. They'll intervene in some way. In an online setting, the exact opposite ends up happening where users engage in what I call gawker's block. Mm. They start staring, they start engaging, they start telling other people to also take a look, but they don't actually necessarily flag that kind of behavior, which is what Facebook relies on in order to take action or even to review potentially crisis situations. I mean, when you were running MySpace live streaming like this, wasn't an option when you were across what you were across there. Do you think it's wrong for social media companies to become effectively live broadcasters without the sort of trappings and safety and regulation that, you know, people like the companies like the the organisation I work for, the BBC, has to put in place? Well, I think what what's happening here is we're giving... With the advent of the smartphone, we're giving everyone a broadcast and a recording device in their hand. And with that, it also means that they're going to take advantage of it, especially individuals who may be doing their last act for moments in time to come. And so what I think has to happen is platforms like you're talking about have to look at it and say, well, it may be live. But there is absolutely something I can do for because I control the platform. I know what kind of data flow is happening. I know what kinds of people are looking at something historically in one way. And all of a sudden there's anomalous behavior to suggest that something unusual is happening. And therefore a, a, an examination occurs. So in many ways, platforms are not only the rule maker, they're the rule enforcer. They're also. So do you the, want to see better regulation? Well, it's not so much a question of regulation by the government. It's a question of self-regulation by the companies because they can in, in, engage their technical technical genius that they've already shown in many other places and apply it in this in these situations. So, are you, saying, example, are, you saying, are you saying Facebook haven't done that yet? I think they can do a better job is what I am actually saying. They've been talking about the fact that they're looking at things. They're going to try to find better algorithms. But I'll give you a simple example. When this individual live streamed in the past, if he had done so, he may have only gotten five views or 10 views. All of a sudden, his views are going up exponentially in a short amount of time. That tells me a moderation review should have been triggered. Something is unusual. It's not behavior that's consistent with this individual's past behavior in the way they use their technology. But the the point is it's live. So it's already happening. It is already happening, but that doesn't mean... You've got a man who is putting out a live bit of film killing his daughter. Right. So this is a situation where you can empower the users by educating them more by providing why should the it be the users on this responsibility why, sh- again? why should it be the user's responsibility to to report something so heinous well i think it's actually a combination of users as well as the company so for example in the physical world we we say well if you see something report it but at the same time the police 
don't stay home and say, well, when you do report it, I'll get out of bed and I'll do something about it. What they do is they still continue to patrol. They use the, their own means of driving around, walking around, taking a look, looking at incidents that are occurring or about to occur. The same has to happen on the platform side, in this case, Facebook, where they're building technologies that trigger an analysis very quickly, not waiting for 100,000 views and then complaints and the media broadcasting something and then saying, okay, now I'll take a look. It's doing it as quickly as you can, sending a message that that's the kind of conduct that isn't allowed on the company site and therefore people will be more reluctant to engage in it than right now they are, as you've been seeing from one incident after another, after another, yes. after another. Let me bring in Martin Campbell, former chief advisor at the communications regulator Ofcom. Martin, welcome to the programme. Good morning. Facebook's now a live broadcaster. So it's Twitter. These services have only recently become live broadcasters. Do you think they should be? Well, I think uh, Helen is quite right. It's, it's not just Facebook that's a live broadcaster. It is everybody who is a live broadcaster. And, uh, and, and that's where the problem is. I mean, this indeed is a very tragic case, but it's, it's the tip of a very, very big iceberg. Yes, it was broadcast live, and so it's more difficult to control. But it, what it does is to highlight the, the need for action in this whole area, because there's, a, there's now an amazing drift between what you would probably call the traditional um, media and the new darker world of internet contributors. And the gap's getting wider. And it, it bothers me that soon there'll be a generation who thinks that the cyber world is the real world. Now, I mean, there are different sorts of answers. It may lie in some sort of um, kite mark, but uh, it, it is a very, very tricky area. Just to be clear then, but and to be specific for a moment, because I understand the broader point that you've made. I mean, so to a certain extent, you could disagree with one of the points about everyone's a live broadcaster. Well, you, you do actually need a platform upon which to do that. And only recently, relatively recently, could you, can you now do it across YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. But if you were to talk specifically about Facebook, it is the largest social network. Yeah. Uh, certainly, I don't know, outside of China, where they use their own services, and Russia, they use their own services, but used in the Western world. Do you think it should be regulated in the same way that the BBC is? No, it should be regulated. The, the, that's the difficulty that this conversation gets into because anyone who believes, I, I think everyone believes that there, there needs to be something done after a case like this. So I'm, that, that's the first thing. I mean, I believe that it is a type of regulation, but I, I also believe that the um, the, the traditional um, sort of regulation, the, the the model that Ofcom uses for regulation, it, it, it is just doomed because it is it's a steamroller, and we need something that actually acts far quicker in uh, in in the internet world. Because I mean, the technology being used here is absolutely incredible, and uh, as as Hemming Ingham says, and I I think he probably didn't go as far as he would like to have gone because he's still in the, the business there. But what, what he's saying, I think, is that these companies can do far more than they are doing. And, and, and that is something that politicians have never really wanted to But will they do explore. it without regulation? That's what no. I'm trying to say. No, no, they won't. So if, if Ofcom um, shouldn't regulate, I understand what you're saying about Ofcom might now not be fit for purpose for the 21st century in the way that it reacts. But who should be forcing the hand of Facebook in this particular instance? Well, I mean, it, it quite clearly, um, politicians need to get involved in this, which is all a bit sad. But, I mean, t t take this. I mean, I, I think it's very sad to sort of sit back and say, oh, well, you know, you can't do anything about it. You, you can do things about it because, for a start, the, the companies can be forced to use their technology to do things. I mean, things like uh, p people like Facebook have been quite uh, successful in keeping porn off. Um, you know, so the, the, there are things that, that they can do. My view is that that these companies can do more than they're doing. If they can't control their businesses, then what's the basis on, on which they're allowed to operate? Because well, we, I'm still we not getting, sorry, Martin, I'm still not getting an answer on what, what should be done then. If they shouldn't be regulated as live broadcasters by the processes that we do have, even if they're imperfect, what should be done instead? 
Oh, well, I mean, it, it needs to be a, a similar organisation to uh, to Ofcom, but it needs to, to be able to act. It needs to have politicians behind them because, look, the, the parallel with, with this... So we need a new organisation to Yes, do of this. course. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because the, the parallel with this is that in the real world, we've stamped on to, to an almost comical degree people's verbal activity of what one person says to another and, you know, suddenly they're arrested. But yet in the internet world, this carries on and on to a far worse degree. And, that, and that's crazy. So if we can do it in one, we can do it in the other. Martin Campbell, thank you for that. Former Chief Advisor at the Communications Regulator Ofcom. And let me also thank my first guest there, Hamu Nigam, the former Chief Security Officer of MySpace, remember MySpace, and now runs online safety consultancy SSP Blue.